Oh hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades, and we are in the Spring Fling Challenge. It's put on by Sab from Sab's Rehabs. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to her, I'm not sure why you wouldn't be, but you guys can check her out. I'll have the playlist and everything linked down below for you. I'm kind of blocking this because a lot of you get real upset when you see my piece <laughs> before the video, which I usually don't do, but for whatever reason. Uh, so I'm trying to, you can see a little hinty hint, but that's it. Uh, yeah, so I just want to thank all of you who helped me decide on what to do with this because it sat for so long, me just like glaring at me and doing all the things to aggravate me because I just could not decide what to do. So thank you. I appreciate every single one of you who voted and helped me get this guy figured out. Uh, so if you'd like to see what we did, keep on watching. Welcome to this week's piece. So this is what we started with. Now, when I originally saw the pictures of this to go pick it up, uh, they clearly did not put the picture of the side in or the fact that one of the casters was completely missing a wheel or that it was missing an entire lower section of drawer. But that's fine, cause we fixed things. Um, I, I was trying to take the drawers out. The knobs just kept popping off. I mean, it just, it was in a state. So we're gonna fix her up and all will be right with the world. Now what I'm doing with this process is kind of going over everything as I'm taking all the drawers out because I clearly can tell that there's issues with this. So I just wanna make sure that I go over every single piece and figuring out what all I'm gonna need to do to fix it. So. As far as the side goes, I know that I'm going to want to just completely remove these. These slide into grooves in the legs and that's what holds this piece together. However, I couldn't get these out and I couldn't figure out what was happening until I got a little closer and they had done a patchwork over a screw and painted it so I couldn't see it. So there's a few screws in here that don't belong. Um, they just didn't really fix anything when they were getting this put back together. They would throw a screw in. There's paint in between all of the cracks of everything. And so we're going to do our best to get this, this old gal fixed up. Um, I'm also completely removing the top of this so that I have easier access to the structure itself and I can make sure that I get it fixed up the way that it should be. It will also help me just strip the top back without worrying about getting it on anything. So it's a win-win. Now I'm going through and I was taking all of the screws out of the top, which is a normal way for these tops to be put on. They use the larger screws and screw them up through the bottom. And that's generally how they hold the top on. However, this one wasn't coming off until I realized that they had two, they had added two nails through the top of it into the bottom. And those were obviously covered in paint. So I didn't see those. So I'm gonna leave the top on for a minute take the casters off so that I can set them on its feet again and then we'll get going. And like I said, since I have the top off, I'm just going to throw some citrus strip on this and wrap it in plastic and then let it sit overnight and not worry about it at all until I'm ready to deal with it. And then once I had the top off, this whole piece just kind of opened up and it was really easy to pull the planks out and look at them and figure out what needed to be done. So I'm pulling out this extra screw. They had done that screw that I showed you in the beginning. It, they screwed it into a drawer glide. It's actually a drawer run. But um, so I'm just removing any of the excess screws that are not necessary. And then I'll go through and try and figure out what I need to do first to get this thing put back together the right way. So you can see all these tongue and groove situations. 
Um, this is a really easy piece to put back together if everything is in good repair. So they just slide right in. And then once you get the whole thing situated back up, everything's already aligned. Nothing was actually broken off as far as the drawer runs go. So that was really, really nice. And then I was just trying to fit them back together. I was having issues because there was no nothing of structure right now holding it together. So it would just slide back out and pop back out. But that's fine. Eventually I got it all situated. And then I tried to go through and scrape off as much of the paint in between all of the breaks that I could to get them at least something decent to be able to glue up. And then I can also fill in and do stuff like that. But Honestly, I'm not worried about this being a rough textured piece just because it's so old. It's clearly been through some things, so if it's not perfect in the end, I'm totally fine with that. Okay, so now that I have the pieces figured out what's going on here, um, we're actually missing this lower drawer support, which is that over there. This one doesn't have one. I did find this in my stash, so I can actually use this and it is the right size. The only thing I'll have to do is cut in a little piece here and here so it'll fit in to the whole mortise and tendon situation this whole piece has to go together so once I get this in knock out some wood here here it will slide in here and then we will have that lower drawer support there and then I can put in the side panels yay this flush here and then that's gonna fit in there little thing came with these from Barry, which I use all the time. Now that I have my markings and my measurements done up, I'm just going to take my pull saw and get those cut out. Um, if you don't own a pull saw, I highly recommend them. Those of you who are on my channel all the time know that I adore this thing. Um, this one is a folding one and I literally put it in my purse because I take it with me to like Home Depot and stuff. If I ever need to make a quick cut there, I will do it in the parking lot and I whip a saw out of my purse and it is delightful. Now that I've got that cut, I'm going to try and fit it in here. So the back was already notched out, so I didn't have to worry about that. The front, we just did those two notches to fit in the groove there in the front side. I'm just going to make sure it is level. And then this part was a little bit difficult because like I said, the carcass isn't supported right now on this side. There's nothing holding it together, so it kept wanting to slide out. So that's why I'm using a clamp to get it on there. You saw that other side just got knocked out again. So I'll have to make sure it's re-leveled and it was just kind of a pain and a little bit precarious until later on, of course, I realized, oh, I should probably clamp the whole piece together while I'm trying to work on it. So bonus tip for you in case you're having a dumb moment like I was. But anyways, the backs of all of these runs are put in with a nail. So I did, just did that with my airstrike. And now I can start fitting in these side panels Again, this gave me such a hassle because I'm trying to get these in here. I'm trying to make sure that they don't fall all the way through. I'm trying to make sure they're um, 
sitting right on either side and then also that I'm getting them lined up as best as I can. You have to remember that it has been a long time since this wood has been together, especially because there's paint and stuff that's been kind of keeping it apart. And so I just did the best that I could getting it all put together and I probably could have just done new paneling, but I feel like this piece is old. It's got bumps and all kinds of the nicks in it all over the place. So just having this one side isn't anything. I mean, having a fresh side, I think would have looked weird. So we're just going to repair and move on. You can see I finally got wise and threw some clamps on it to help me hold it together. <laughs> uh, these moments just kill me where I'm like, oh, had I only done that at the beginning. So I'm going to make sure this is all lined up as best I can and then we're going to leave it overnight to set up. Now, this has been sitting overnight, and as I'm lifting off the plastic, you can see the paint just wanted to come off of this thing. It just was coming off with it. So I was like, oh, well, that'll make my life a lot easier. So got this done, stripped it all back, and then went through with some steel wool and mineral spirits and got it cleaned up so that we can reattach and prep it. I'm using all of the same screws that it came with. I do try and do that as much as possible. Sometimes you just can't, but in this case, all these screws were still um, in great shape. So I use those same screws to reattach them and this will give me something easier to sand on instead of it wobbling around everywhere. And this part killed me. I was like, what happened to this guy? My best guess is that it was in a kitchen before it was painted white and they used it as a cutting board, maybe an island of some kind. I don't know, but that's just what it looked like to me. So I almost never go in this heavy with it, but I started with an 80 grit and then had to work my way up from there. And then even once sanding was finished, there was still quite a bit of staining going on. So I used some oxalic acid I did two rounds of this because it needed it. Um, I'm only gonna show one, but you put it on. I let it sit overnight. I came back in the next day, did another coat, let it sit overnight, and then you can do a complete wipe back. And you wanna make sure that you get it all off. So of course we're working on other things as other projects are going on. So while the top's setting up with the oxalic acid, I can repair this drawer. Um, I would have put in a new drawer bottom for this if all of the drawer bottoms were in decent condition. However, they all kind of had that weird wavy feel to them. And if I put a new one in this one, I think it again would have been like doing the side paneling new. It just wouldn't have looked right. So I opted to repair this one and the repair took really, really well. So, um, what I did is just put glue in between here and then I will take blocks to build out the areas so that I have something to clamp down and hold it on either side I either use tape or wax paper to prevent the glue from sticking to anything.
Now I'm going to take my wood filler and I'm just filling in any areas that need it. I'm not going crazy, so this was a larger chunk, but any of the smaller dings, I'm opting to leave those in the piece because I think it's just going to add character at this point. We're not going to have like this perfectly pristine finished product. It's going to be, we're going to go cottage with this. I feel like that's a good descriptor for what we're trying to work, work on here. But I do want to fill in any areas that are just kind of weird. Like this had weird rings bent into the wood. So those were getting filled, you know, just any spots that I deemed necessary. They got wood filled. And then we'll let that set up. Now things are starting to get ready so I can remove the clamps off of the drawer, check that out, make sure that it's looking good. And then move back over to the top and as you can see it's just not exactly perfect so I'm gonna have to figure out something to do with this top I initially wanted to kind of leave it natural but I'm just not going to be able to with the amount of damage that the top has sustained so we'll figure it out but for now let's just clean up all the oxalic acid Now we're on to sanding off the wood putty and then also during this time I'm also giving the entire piece a scuff sand to smooth out a little bit and prep up the paint. As I was going along, of course, I found something else to fix. So there's just this kind of weird crack in the wood here in the drawer. So I'm taking some of my um, sanding dust from my sander from the top. So it's the same wood. I add just a teeny tiny bit of glue and then I'll fill that gap in with that because it's not going to need to be clamped back in. It just needs to be kind of filled and I want it to be the same wood that was already there. Now we're busting out the bag of tricks. Uh, just kidding. This is just a surplus of what I had from when I did the ethereal dresser piece. Um, I'll put a little link somewhere if you want to see how I did that one. But I had tons of these extra and I'm so thankful for that now because it was very upsetting at the time having so many of these. But now it's kind of nice just to be able to pull them out and throw them on a piece when I need it. So I just worked out an arrangement with a lot of these molds that I already had and glued them on. Of course, while it's on its back, waiting for all of those to dry, it's the perfect time to put on these new casters. So these are just ones I found on Amazon. I love them. I feel like they still have kind of an antique vibe to them, but they're much sturdier than the little wooden wheels, and these are going to last quite a bit longer, so it's good. Now, if I didn't have molds on this piece, I probably wouldn't have bothered to prime it because the paint in itself it would have worked as a decent primer. It wouldn't have had adhesion issues um, and there wouldn't have been any bleed through. But since I did the moldings, I don't like paint directly over those without a primer because I find that it doesn't adhere right. So we are now priming the entire piece because of that. Now for the top, I ended up going in with this Varathane. It's like a light gray stain. I thought it would help with, because like I said, I could still see some of the staining and everything, even with two coats of oxalic acid. So I wanted the top natural, but I need something to kind of help me hide things. I didn't want a dark color. So I tried this out. It was fine, but not exactly what I wanted. So there will be more to come later.
Now I am going to seal over this with poly just because it's going to create a protective barrier between the next step. Um, and I'm also including this with the poly here. My shop this day was extremely cold and my poly was too thick. So you'll see it going on thick and weird and I should have just known better and thinned it out before I started working, but I didn't. Sometimes I just like to fight with myself for no apparent reason. So I'm just showing you this. You don't have to worry about it. It will be totally fine. It looks all kinds of crazy. I'm just going to smooth out any of the heavier sections and then just not overwork it because that's where you're going to run into issues, but it's just going to look crazy for a bit, but don't worry. It'll dry down just fine and then you can go back and give it a light sand, which I do between all of my poly coats anyways. Now for the second coat, I obviously wisened up and thinned out my poly and then it went on much nicer. Now we can head back to the body and since I don't know what I'm doing with the entire piece, I do know that I'm putting decoupage on the front of this section so I'm just going to add in um, some white to pop the decoupage paper just a little bit more. And so this was the winner of the post that I did. You guys, thank you so much for voting and tell, I was struggling so hard with this and it even was hard to break it down to those three images that I chose. So I'm so grateful to you. I hope you know that. So I just do a rough cut on this to get it fit in and then I can just rip off any areas around the moldings that I want. I'm never worried about this being perfect because I painted my decoupage papers so it all gets covered up in the end. Now this is a print that I do at home off my computer. You can order from Zazzle or something like that if you want to have a company print them. It will be on much thicker paper. This is like the thinnest tissue paper possible. I like it because I feel like you can't see it in the end result, but it's not terribly easy to work with. So there's always give and take with every kind of medium you use. Now for me, the easiest way to do this one, and honestly it changes with every piece, what depending on what I'm doing, but I just did a strip along the top of the poly. I use my satin poly, that's how I adhere it. Um, I just do a strip along the top and then I can add it along the bottom and you can see me working with the paper as I go. And once it's wet with the poly, I can kind of use that to help it rip just a little more easily as I go. And then I'm just making little snips with the scissors and getting like a tear started. And then I will work it around the piece that way. And that's just how I'm gonna attach the whole thing. And then once it dries, I can then go in with a blade and cut between the drawers. And then I will re-poly it over the top of that so that there's no lifting edges. Now, since I want this to have kind of a watercolor feel, I'm going to go over the entire piece in Devonshire Cream, which is just a very lovely creamy white color. And this is going to help give the watercolor illusion because it's lightening up all the colors. So I chose a few colors from the print itself that I thought went well. And then you'll see they go on really, really bright. But then as you blend them together, they will start kind of having that moody, swirly, watercolory feel to them because you have the white underneath. And then each color has a brush and then it will also have a clean blending brush that I will use to swirl them together. 
As you can see, I do not care about colors mixing together. I think that makes it look better in this type of blend. There's so many different kinds of blends. You kind of learn the ones that you like best. Um, and sometimes it just varies piece to piece. But you can see I just kind of put the colors next to the image where I want that color to shine through a little more than others. And I will just keep blending around the piece. I almost always do these little swirly motions um, just to get everything fully together. I go over the paper and then the paper has been sealed with poly because that's how we applied it. So if you get any on the paper that you don't want, you can always take a damp cloth and wipe it back and you're just fine and it doesn't have any adverse effects. And you can see that I'm kind of doing just the border around there. I'm not worried about it drying out too much. I want to work quickly so that I can get it before it dries out all the way, but you can always just add water and spray it and get it going. Once I have the whole front done, I'm going to pull out the drawers and then I can see what I need to do about the colors on the inner drawers. I try to get them matched up decently well. I don't care if it's perfect, but I don't want it to be just crazy when you open the drawers and it just looks totally different. So I will go back and forth with the colors, blend them out, and just have it be more of a cohesive thing when you open the drawers. Just to add another layer to this piece because I feel like it needs it, um, I'm going to dry brush over the entire thing. So this is going to really actually make those distressed points in the dresser stand out even more. So again, this is not a super clean finish. This is meant to be very old, cottagey in that kind of realm. So that's what I want to do and it's going to make the details pop a little more and just kind of make it look a little, little more lived in. Now same with the top, I'm using the exact same color and I'm dry brushing over the gray stain. Anywhere that you go a little too heavy handed you can take a kind of a damp cloth and wipe it back and you just keep going until you get something that you like. It's kind of a process and you want to build it up as you go. I sealed everything in on the body on the body with just some satin poly. And then I went through and added this hardware. So I wanted the hardware to be quite a bit darker because the piece overall was just very, very light. However, these were just a little bit too dark. So I'm taking my gold and I'm hitting those and it will tone them down just a little and also make them match the casters that we already have on. And then also I'm gonna throw gold on all of the appliques so that those pop as well.
And then on the top, I just, I don't know. I kept going back and forth with things. So this is where we're at now. I decided to throw these stencils on the four corners. And then on top of that, because I still wanted the top to have the watercolory feel as the base, I did just a very light blue gray and I did it a really, really wet wash over the top of the white dry brushing and over the top of the stencils so that the stencils wouldn't stand out too much. And then while I waited for that to dry, I went in with some gold gilded stripes on the sides. And if you want clean stripes, this is not the way to do it. You'll want to use a liquid and you'll want to use tape. But because this is kind of a grungy finish anyways, I did the gold gilding wax with a stencil of stripes. And then anywhere that you have extra gilding wax that you didn't want on there, see like it gets a little bit messy, you can just take some clear wax and a rag and it will wipe it back and you can totally get rid of it that way. If it's been sitting for a while, you'll need a little bit more of a scrub, but it works, just give it some time. A little bit of elbow grease or finger grease, if you will. And of course, any areas that I missed, I'll just use a little detail brush and fill those out. And back to the top, now that that's dry, I'm going to seal it with white wax. And that is just going to add to kind of the watery look. And I think, this will be where I end the top. It went on a journey, but I like where it ended up, so we're good. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this. It was such a process. This thing was just, I mean, falling apart essentially is where we started. So I'm really pleased that we got to put her back together and just really embrace the charm of these old little, little dainty dressers. I just think they're so, so sweet. Um, and they're some of my favorite pieces to do. I feel like they fit into tons of people's faces. You can get them into um, quite a few vehicles, so they're good in that regard, because a lot of times that's a hindrance for somebody to be able to come pick something up, but these fit in a hatchback pretty pretty well. So um, I've seen some people work some magic in their cars. <laughs> but I, just, I hope you enjoyed this process. Again, thank you so much to all of you who helped me decide and vote on the post, because I really just, I mean, it was just very daunting for a while. Um, I'm sure you guys know what that's like to just have something in there and you just can't get it out. So thank you so much. Thank you guys. Just, you're the best humans ever. I'm so, so appreciative of all of you, all of your likes and comments and everyone who subscribed, truly just thank you so, so much. And I hope that you know that that is so enough. I don't ever, ever need anything else. But the people who do go above and get me stuff off my wish list and my, my buy me a coffee thing, I, I mean, I'm just blown away every time. So I don't want anyone to feel like they have to do any of that. I just think it's super cool when they do. And I just totally appreciate every comment and like and everything like that. You don't have to do anything else. I just opened the membership tab so you can check that out as well if you are interested in that. But uh, thanks so much. I'll get you guys some photos and I will see you next week.